I know um, I know you're a very busy man and uh, you're still just, goodness, what, uh, 72 hours out? Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty much. We're wow. Three well, days what's, away. Your, what's your mindset right now coming into the Indie Pro? Well, um, I'm really cool and calm and collected. This is my fourth time doing this show. Yeah. And I'm from Indiana. Yep. So this is my, this is my home, you know, and I feel like I've done this show about as much as any other show. Mm -hmm. So I just feel this sense of calm, cool, and collectiveness. Um, as for how I feel my body is responding, sure. uh, the last few days I've been trying to fill up and put that size back on. And mm -hmm. it's really encouraging because, <laughs> you know, after dieting for 14 weeks, basically my past eight weeks, I've just been flat and, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, I just people would look at me and think I'm nuts, mm -hmm. but I feel like I'm small. You know, I don't have that roundness and fullness that I no. normally have. No. But the past two workouts after being fed, I just it's been super encouraging because I blew up like a tick. <laughs> yeah, it's like all of a sudden all that shape is right back. And so mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in a great spot. I just need to finish this up right, not eat too much in the next couple of days, and. Yeah. I think we're going to be super competitive here this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I liked how you put a lot of information into that. Um, for people that have never competed before and have never gone through depletion, like explain why it's so important for you to deplete down and then refill. So with bodybuilding, there's two phases that people generally do. There are three phases you can do, but I, th I think one's stagnant and dormant. So you can either be bulking, and that's when you're gaining weight and put on on size and the muscle mass you can maintain that's where you maintain the same weight i almost never do that there's cutting so to get ready for a contest you need to restrict your calories and get your body composition to the appropriate level i think the golden standard for bodybuilders male bodybuilders is three percent body fat so you basically gotta keep yourself in a caloric deficit until you hit that body fat percentage then once you're there then you can fill up right what does, um, what does, a t are you a person that's like, uh, do you say peak week? Or I remember a few years ago, uh, people were saying it was called hell week. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, hell week. Yeah. Hell week seems, week. Seems right. No, <laughs> peak week. I don't even think it's hell week because honestly, I've been eating all week. I feel great. Yeah. It's like I'm the best week. Calories down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I'm, you know, I'm, um. I got up to 282 pounds this off season. I'm not a small guy. So after going through several weeks of being in a deficit, it takes me a while to get that size back and that glycogen and water retention back in the muscle. So I have that shape and that pop. Mm -hmm. So I've been eating since Sunday. Yeah. What kind of foods are you enjoying now? Well, I started with the most dense stuff right off the bat. It's going to be like red meats, fats. Yeah. Yeah, uh, salmon stuff like that. Then, as I get closer to the show, everything's gonna lighten up. Mm. Uh, rice and white fish and mm. veggies. And Is there a specific strategy with eating the lighter foods towards the <laughs> contest day? Yeah, uh, my goal for this season was to really maximize my aesthetics. Mm. Uh, I think sometimes because you really don't have any like missing parts, you're very complete. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm a very balanced body bodybuilder, but. I really wanted to take in the judges' feedback and their consideration. And all I hear about is midsection, midsection, midsection. So, well, that's you know, just I the conversation that, in 2022, you know? Yeah. So, all the heavy eating was done already. You know, I, I basically quit that just within the past few hours. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to start going into smaller meals and easier to digest meals. It's easier on the GI system mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, less food, less right. gut. Matter. So, yeah. That's kind of where we're going with this. We're going to bring that gut in as tight as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think the uh, the smaller meals helps with like the stomach inflammation? Do you think like that causes like the expanding of the gut? Um, I think it's more the nature of the macronutrients is going to be, and you know, just what's in the food that's going to be what causes the inflammation. Okay. The food will also cause it cause inflammation, but um, no, I think just smaller meals is less volume. Simple yeah. as that. That yeah. kind of keeps my metabolic mechanism rolling. Mm. Okay. How are you feeling? Like you, you think you're, um, is this, so I don't want to like throw my opinion too far in here, but like, I thought your Texas package was phenomenal last year. Um, Thank you. And I, I think it was probably your best. Um, 
how do you feel about coming into what this is your fourth indie pro compared mm-hmm. to let's say last year's Texas pro? Well, I think uh, continuing on last year and going to Texas, mm-hmm. it almost felt like a mistake because I felt my placement was really low. I yeah, it was a place yeah. in back some of these guys that I placed that placed ahead of me. Um, I think I'm a better bodybuilder than what I was placed that day. So mm-hmm. I'm a little disappointed about that show, to be honest with you. Yeah. Not from my perspective. I thought I brought in good conditioning and nice shape and everything. Mm-hmm. I talked about it. I was really shocked that you were um, outside the top six, right? Yeah, I was, was seventh. Seventh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was kind of laughing in the face. I wasn't real happy about it. I mean, that whole but, show was um, crazy. But. Yeah, it's Texas. I don't know what to say. <laughs> New rules. <laughs> yeah, they do what they want down there. Mm-hmm. And I'm cool with that. Just as yeah. long as it doesn't work negatively on me. Um, but last year was a long season, man. I've never done five shows within one season. Yeah. I did seven shows within a calendar year time last year, but I came out of the gate hottest at Indie Pro and New York Pro. So when yeah. my body was fresh and full, I think is when I was producing some of my better looks. Mm. Um, as I lost some of that fullness, I really tried to push that conditioning card as much as I could. So I think that's what you saw at Texas Pro. Yeah. The, the leg separation, especially from the quads was just like it was yeah, phenomenal like i think i dropped my jaw when i was watching the live stream like it was really mm-hmm. impressive yeah i think my leg conditioning is equal to that i think i'm a little fuller um you know my glute and back conditioning is generally where my biggest critique is for myself as okay. last thing to get in shape for a show usually the front side of me is ready within like four weeks of dieting wow and it takes 10 weeks to get my backside in yeah yeah okay so um, but I'm happy with where it is. And I think it's going to be some of the best condition you've ever seen from me on stage. Plus just with everything else I've been working on. Mm-hmm. I'm just throwing up the, um, some back shots from you. Oh yeah. Um, for the fans that are prepared. watching. Yeah. Yeah. So Texas pro is the first one there. We got Tampa pro 2020 in the middle. Yep. And that's the 2019 indie pro from the back. Yep. Yeah. You know, you, yeah, you know, you, <laughs> We're seeing some evolution there. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, you can see that Indie Pro that, that year they were really uh, critiqued about the lighting. You can't see it my was, lab. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Yep. But yeah, thanks for throwing that up there. That's that's real cool. But um, very nice. Uh, you, we really dived into your competitive history like right off the bat. But something that I think a lot of my audience members enjoy is getting to know the athlete uh, more than just on the stage. And I, I need to figure out how to say it better because there's another cool guy that has a channel. It's called um, Behind the Muscle. Uh, yeah. And, like he does a phenomenal job. Mm-hmm. So I need to figure out a better way to say that, uh, a new catchphrase. But uh, run us through. Uh, I read that you were a chiropractor or you still are. Um, yeah, I'm a doctor. What, what do you do? Uh, I, I, wore, I wore several hats. I think I spend the most time um, with my team. You know, I'm a coach and I'm a trainer. Yes. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of where my passion lies. Um, I found out a long time ago with chiropractic, especially it's like the nature of that energy and mm-hmm. to be able to want to help somebody on that level. You know, it's really hard to do, especially when I'm prepping. I've, I've got my patients, get, I get testy, you know, mm-hmm. patients are very demanding and they want something from me. And I feel like sometimes I get irritated because I can't deliver the best version of myself. Oh, okay. Now, when it comes to training people, People come to the gym and when we work, everybody's there for a very progressive reason. Yes. We're there to get better and improve right now. Mm-hmm. So that type of energy is really easy for me to be around. Yes. And uh, that just kind of sets the tone for how I feel and just my mental well-being. Yeah. Yeah. You seem like a very energized person. So um, I appreciate it. I know the people watching are appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. I do, uh, do what I can to protect that by creating a nice mm-hmm. surround. Association is everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, um, I started a new business venture on the side. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but, um, their big thing is like association is everything and who you put yourself around affects like how you approach a situation and how you communicate and how you carry yourself. So, uh, oh, absolutely. yeah, me being, um, active military, a lot of the people I'm around aren't always the happiest fun per- people. So, uh, when I take that uniform off, I try to, I mean, I didn't take my shirt off today, but uh, when I take that off, I try to like reset as soon as I enter the house, you know, for my wife and then for the fans watching, I try to just kind of reset. So um, your, 
your attitude, your, your presence is very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you've been a pro since 2017. Uh, yeah. Uh, I won my pro card in 2016. That was, uh, Close. Super heavyweight national champ in 2016. Mm-hmm. Then, yes, I started competing as the pro at the 2017 Tampa Pro. Yes, yes. What are, um, in your first year of competing, and you've been doing it for, uh, math is hard, maybe let's say six years. Um, mm-hmm. What was some big takeaways from your first year compared to some of the takeaways you're taking now in 2022? Uh, good question. <laughs> um well there's so much man there's so much yeah. I, i've done 18 pro shows now so within the first calendar year in 2017 i did one show but within that calendar year i did five mm. so indie pro new york pro i did the um chad nichols show the muscle mayhem show yeah and well, i think there's one more in there somewhere it's blank in my mind but nevertheless um when i first started uh, Tampa Pro was my first show, and I felt like I was overlooked a little bit. I came in really nice and round and full with pretty decent conditioning. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought there's some Canadian guys that got a, a much better placement with a superior, inferior physique, excuse me. Yeah. But it seemed like some of their social media presence and their popularity, you know, I think something that doesn't translate to the actual competitive bodybuilder on stage. Yep translated to the judging it, it, um, and you know what dorian i feel like that's such a taboo topic but you and being I, I a pro and me being a social media guy like i feel like it's definitely there but for some reason well i mean there's obvious reasons why people want to talk about it but it's definitely a thing yeah i mean i think um back then you know i'm specifically talking about and no offense to anybody of course of course. Um, Reagan Grimes, he just had a gigantic million person following and he finished top five. Hmm. And um, I would love to throw down and be compared to Reagan Grimes side by side, shot to shot any day of the week. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of something that I noticed right off the bat. Uh, then as I got into 2018 and started going through that season, um, I noticed, you know, some of these guys that have seniority in the league, they seem to get favorable placements. Like if I got somebody that we look about the same, it seems like somebody who's been in the league for 10 years was always getting that, you know, a little little bit higher placement than me, but you know, I'm not complaining. And it seems to be the nature of the game and it is what it is. And I understand why they do it like that. And but what that taught me was I'm not going to be a one hit wonder. Like some of these guys have done. Yeah. And I need to get in there and pay my dues. So people respect me. And then I need to show up in shape. So that's kind of the way I see it now. It's like I've paid my dues now, having 18 pro shows under my belt. Yeah. Now all I need to do, my name's out there. People will give me – I've got the respect. I just need to show up with the physique that is undeniable. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's it's any question that when people see you on that scorecard, they instantly think top six. Like you're going to be on that first call out battling it out uh, and, you mm-hmm. know, where the cards lie, the cards lie. Um, I don't think that's anyone's doubt. So I guess yeah. that's a big shocker for Texas. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I don't think I'm going back there this year. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get too ahead of your comp test competition, but like, um, you know, give or take what your placings are at Indy. Um, are you also doing the New York? Yeah, I'm signed up. Okay. I thought I saw that. Yeah. Applications in. We're ready to go with that as well. Yeah. I went to see uh, Steve Weinberger uh, about a month ago, three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And um, just so he could uh, give me an idea of what I need to be doing to finish this up right, what kind of look I needed to bring. And he seemed impressed and he seemed like uh, he thought I was on track with everything we're doing. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, just kind of out of respect, I, I want to do his show. Yes. Uh, and that's a big show. Plus, last year I got fourth place. Mm-hmm. Um, got to return I really for that. Moved up. I think I got 13th place the year before. Yeah, it was. Yeah, last year was a huge, uh, from, yeah. how, from my Foxhole, two fourth place finishes for you. That was. Yeah. yeah, right out of the gate. Yeah, that was phenomenal. And, yeah, arguably, I could have done better, but I'm not worrying about that. I'm just worrying about what's coming up in front of me. Yep. And I well, think, you're gonna uh, have that chance this year. You know, with any with a New York Pro, if I collect yep. the win at one or both of these shows, I'm gonna shut it down till the Olympia. Absolutely. But yep. 
I think the next stop, if I don't collect a win at either of these shows, will probably be Toronto. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be a good one. Yeah, last year, in, in no disrespect to the guys that did Toronto last year, but uh, I thought that the lineup outside the top four was was pretty light. So, I mean, that's did, a definite. Did uh, Joel chance. Thomas win that last year? Is that the he one did? W- yeah, w- yeah, he looked pretty good. Yeah, he looked. Pretty yeah, good. He, he did look good. He did look good. Um, yeah, I would say the, and I think he beat what Quentin for Quentin got second. Yeah, yeah, Quentin was very soft. Yeah. So I don't like to say bad things about anybody. Uh, but yeah, I think as, in terms of that lineup, it was not the most competitive lineup of the entire season. Yes. So I don't know what to expect this year. Generally, when I see shows like this, mm-hmm. where it might not be the toughest lineup, you don't have like some of the higher quality, higher tier Olympians, mm-hmm. you know, flooding the show. It seems like the next year, if somebody knows, if all these competitors notice yep. that was kind of yep. your show, next year everybody jumps in it. So yeah. I don't know yeah. what to expect. Everyone I'll gets just, their uh, their flights and everything booked. Yep. Yeah, I'm I booked. Think, uh, yeah, I'm I think to Airbnb. I just need to find my passport, man. Oh yeah, is that a, I mean, is that a struggle? Not where it should be. Oh, I lost all my documents when I moved from um, Wisconsin to Kansas City on my first yeah. tour. So. I, uh, I'm going through that process right now, trying to get all that stuff recovered. So I feel your I'll pain. It, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I just don't want to be dealing with it during peak week. You know, that's, that's what it, that's my deal this week. Yes. Yeah. You're gonna have to hire an assistant to, to handle that stuff. Yeah. I told my daughter, if she finds it, I'll pay 20 bucks. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's a good one right there. <laughs> oh man. What else? Uh, so you, you did a little bit of chiropractic and you kind of, it sounds like you stepped away from that and now you're doing mostly yeah, personal training. Then? Is, but at the same time, you know, what I've learned from chiropractic and absolutely the philosophy behind it and everything is something I've applied in my everyday life, the way I eat, the way I train, the way I train my clients. So mm-hmm. even though I don't adjust people like I used to, I'm still applying, you know, the principles of chiropractic to everything I do. Yeah. How does that help with um, knowing like how to maybe like train a muscle in a certain way? Well, I think it's a tremendous advantage for me. Uh, chiropractors are top notch when it comes to musculoskeletal docs. You really can't get somebody who understands the musculoskeletal system better than like an ortho or a chiro. Wow. Um, so, you know, just understanding the nervous system, understanding the skeletal and muscular system, how it all works together, how to make biomechanics and kinematics work optimally uh i think i've got a huge advantage um you know uh everybody kind of learns their own way but i just think this really in-depth education that i've um encountered and i think it all stems from bodybuilding yeah it's kind of because before i even knew what i was going to do with my undergraduate and i have a degree in exercise science from ball state university Mm -hmm. I was bodybuilding, you know, I, so bodybuilding uh, created the passion or drove it. Yeah. And, and it kind of created the interest and that's where uh, all my academia went in that direction. So bodybuilding led me to my degree in exercise science, which led me to my degree in doctorate mm-hmm. of chiropractic. So that was kind of the basis for everything. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, there's an advantage there for sure. Understanding just how the nervous system ties into the muscle system and how to uh, maximally load certain lifts and avoid injuries. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely avoiding injuries. I feel like yeah, that's, that's like thing. so important, especially for pros. Yeah. I constantly want to take steps in the right direction. If I injure myself, I step back every single time and knock on wood. I really haven't had any injuries that are substantial mm-hmm. uh, through my entire history of training. I had minor things. I had like a little minor pec tear had a little minor back injury. <laughs> I think I got that like five weeks before nationals one year, Oof. but all this stuff healed up just fine. You know, nothing catastrophic, nothing major. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's your, uh, what does a typical training week look like for you? So just recently I picked up a sixth day, but generally I train five days a week. Monday, I usually take off. Okay. Uh, Tuesday, I do uh, chest and usually a few sets of lateral raises, like seven sets of lateral raises. Wednesday, I do back and core. Thursday, I, I, usually in my off season, I'll take Thursdays off so I can just have more time to recover. Mm-hmm. But recently, I've been throwing in just a light, like range of motion, stimulating type of leg day. Okay. Hmm. Friday, shoulders and triceps. 
Saturday, back and biceps. Sunday, leg day. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. You put, I mean, I know nothing, but, well, I know some things, but, you know, I would, I would never think about using triceps on a shoulder day. I, I guess I've always trained push pull legs, but mm -hmm. uh, is there well, like some I like strategy to, to that? Up. I just think shoulders and chest all in the same day just seems like a lot. It's so much. Yeah. Yeah. But so then shoulders up for a push day. Yeah. I can be in there two hours with that, but I think I, I've always had this thing and I just told you, I started training on Thursdays, kind of doing like mobility workout, right. stimulation workout. And that just kind of goes against my grain because I, Usually when I go to the gym, I want to do something that's productive. I want to do something that's going to create stimulus for change. Yep. Yep. And the intensity is generally always there. So um, it takes me time to recover from these workouts. So me getting one chest day in a week, that's fine. I'm recovering three, four days after every single workout I do. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Do you have any preference? Um, you know, I know Phil Heath loved his hammer strength machines. Uh, some people, you know, love barbell work. Is there something that you kind of side towards or are you kind of impartial? Uh, I, my thing is I don't ever do the same workout twice. I switch it up every single time with me and with my clients. Just keep the body guessing, keep it adapting. Um, but one thing I do notice when it comes to chest development, you know, barbell motions haven't been the best. That's actually how I kind of tore and hurt my pec a few years back. Mm -hmm. Um, real minor tear, and you can even see the visual disturbance. I can barely see it in the field. But it seems dumbbell motions have always been better for my chest development, particularly, and also, obviously, injury prevention. Yes. But no, uh, I'm very lucky to be a, a member of Arborist Pro Gym. I've been in Arborist for 11 years now, and they just have such a good atmosphere and such good equipment. Um, so... <laughs> I think what I'm trying to say is whatever armbrist has is what I like. Yeah. They, that's perfect branding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's good. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's really cool. The owner there is Dylan armbrist. He's a friend of mine and he doesn't grab like a whole line of hammer strength equipment or a whole line of lifetime fitness equipment. He just kind of buys the best in each piece. Mm -hmm. He picks and chooses the best of the best. And that's what his gym consists of. Yeah. And if something's better, he'll replace it. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate that. And that just really just set up uh, an environment that set me up for success. Absolutely. I, I wish I've, I've genuinely, for me, I've been looking to find a gym that's not so commercial. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm in like a, well, not a small town, but like I'm just outside San Francisco right now. And it just seems impossible for me to find like a good hardcore, not even hardcore, just a bodybuilding uh, centric mm -hmm. gym. Uh, it's I a like struggle once <laughs> yeah. I, I went to Francisco twice and you know, I looked around the, the vibe there is different San Francisco is not the most bodybuilding centric community no. I've ever been in no no it's definitely not I feel, um, your pain. I feel your pain yeah yeah and I'm just uh I'm just a small fella just trying to find a good gym and you know make a national stage appearance maybe once that'd be cool but you're great yeah that's a, it's definitely a struggle. I notice, um, especially in the evenings, I've noticed people, it's crazy how many people go to the gym I go to in the evenings. Um, mm -hmm. so now it's like, now I'm at, I'm like part of that 5.00 AM club and, uh, God you train in the you. afternoon or. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hate I the mornings because I'm so hungry from my prep and all the stimulants I use during oh, prep. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I have I've been more of a morning person, but I'm generally not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I typically work out some time between like three o'clock and eight o'clock. Yeah. PM. I think that's how I've always done it. I'd get off work at like four or five and train. And, uh, you know, now I've, I've trying to prioritize these interviews and building the channel, uh, and contest coverage. So I moved to 5.00 AM workouts, but I'll, I'll tell you, man, like the intensity is just not there. Uh, and then the mobility, like, I just feel like I'm just so lethargic and I'm like, I'm yawning during the workout. It's like, <laughs> I can't it is that. not right. And uh, I've tried it a few times. I've tried to do like two, two days and get yes. up to six, come back in the afternoon. And it's always short lived before you know it. I'm overtrained and it's just not, it's counterproductive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two days. I, I couldn't imagine. I but think I used to do I it really, lightly. One thing I've really put some emphasis on in the past couple of years of my prep. You know, sometimes I find it much more 
important for me holistically to get in an extra two or three hours of sleep and get in a cardio mm-hmm. session. I can get in a cardio session every single day, mm-hmm. but um, I really have put some emphasis on my rest and the amount of sleep I get. If I don't get a full night's sleep, you know, I'll get up, I'll do my cardio, I'll eat some breakfast, and then I'll take a nap. Yeah. So I'll do whatever I can to make sure that I'm getting my rest. It's something I've really prioritized, and it has helped me as a whole, as mm-hmm. a bodybuilder the past couple of years. Or just as a human. I mean, I feel like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I feel like that's a huge piece people are forgetting is rest. You know, either rest from the gym or just resting your body in general. Um, I think I saw or listened to, I guess, technically, on like a recent Joe Rogan podcast. They're saying like your life expectancy gets decreased by like so many weeks for like, or so many days or something for like every day you sleep less than six hours. Mm -hmm. Like it seriously contributes to like a shortened lifespan. Yeah. So. Yeah. Between like, yeah, just like I said, like between like resting from the gym, you know, you're upping it up to six days a week, you know, getting ready for the show. And, uh, and then besides that, you're only training five days a week. So, I you, mean, yeah, you, and for a good while, uh, I was training four days a week in my off season and that, that really seemed to work well. Yeah. It was just because really I kind of get a six day a week type of thing. Uh, in my in season, then I tried to just continue doing the same thing right after my season was over, and it was productive for a while. Yep. But all of a sudden, everything stopped. It's like my appetite shot, my mm-hmm. uh, weight started shoot going down. Mm-hmm. So I reinvented the wheel. I, I just dropped out two more days. I realized I was overtraining, doing six days a week, and that's something that I've been flirting with ever since I started training back when I was sixteen. Yeah. I just always had that insen- sense of intensity, and I pushed myself t- hard as I can. But yeah, a couple of years ago, I was just doing four days a week in my off season. And I discovered that's what I can do to kind of keep myself on the balance between being productive and being overtrained. Mm-hmm. How did you, how do you feel when you're overtrained? Like, is it more of like a body aches or are you just like, you were talking about not feeling productive? Like what are some like telltale signs for you? For me, it's like almost immediately I can feel it in the back of my throat. Really? Yeah, it's like it's almost like I'm coming down with a sinus infection every time I hit overtraining. And if, if for several years in my undergrad, in my undergrad I was a little bit more wild. I, I definitely um, was bodybuilding to the best of my uh, ability on a natural level. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I party a little bit too on the weekends and have some booze. I don't yep. do that anymore. Oh, good but for you. Because you know, once again, it just the stress on the body is overwhelming. I, I can't deal with hangovers anymore. I like to always function like a Ferrari. Yeah. And if I don't, I feel like there's something wrong with me. So, um, yeah, back when I was in late high school through m- most of my college career, it's like I kept chronically getting this bullshit sinus infection, throat ache type of thing. Hmm. And it's overtraining, overtraining, overtraining the whole time. Back then, I trained six, seven days a week. I just loved it. I was doing everything I could to be the best version of myself and yeah. advance. It's addictive when you start getting good gains and good progress. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, that was my problem when I was younger and it took me a long time to figure it out, mm-hmm. but I'm glad I did. And so, but yeah, uh, generally I feel kind of um, a general malaise. My body's kind of achy on top yep. of that. And I just feel like I have typical energy. I just feel like I'm dragging ass. And I want to sit on the couch mm-hmm. and I have those symptoms in the back of my throat. And it's like, as soon as I get all that, it's like, I know exactly what's going on. That means mm-hmm. eat some food and skip the gym a couple of days. Yeah. That's good. I, I think it's really interesting that you actually get like physical symptoms uh, yeah, that you can identify instead of just being like, Oh, I'm just starting to get a little achy. So that's, that's really mm-hmm. cool. Hmm. No, I, I like achy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sore from a workout. I, I generally think that's a, a positive thing. It makes me think that's, I've done that's what I always thought. Yeah. And then I uh-huh. started seeing people say that it's because your your body's sore because it's not having enough nutrition or water or rest to recover. And I was just like, is it that always? Because like I feel like after like a monster <laughs> leg day, uh like last time I did like glute focused uh squats and like my glutes were raw so i'm like is it i don't i mean my water was pretty good that day i don't know well you know the old thing i always used to hear is that's lactic acid in your muscles right and yeah while you're training you do produce lactic acid in your muscles mm-hmm. as soon as oxygen gets to that lactic acid neutralizes so mm. it's back to 
So that lactic acid is pretty much gone. So I, I think that lactic acid theory is pure bull. Yeah. Uh, but what I do think happens is you, if you, if you train hard, you're going to create micro trauma to the tissue. And that trauma is going to have an effect of soreness and pain that can last mm-hmm. for days. So I think that's what people are actually feeling. And there is some validity to what you just said and what you heard. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, uh, I was kind of talking about this the other day. I don't want to, I don't want to come off the subject. I'll finish this thought, <laughs> but it's like at the same time, you know, you're, people are saying if your muscles are sore, based on what you're saying is inadequate nutrition of some sort. Yes. And no, mm-hmm. you know, if you do some easy yoga workout and you get sore from that, maybe, yeah, you have a terrible lack of nutrition, Yeah, but if you bust an ass and going balls to the wall with, you know, seven sets of squats and your ass is destroyed. Yep. Yeah, lack of nutrition. Yeah, that's trauma. Yeah, and you need your nutrition to repair that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, mm. yeah. Mm, what else? Um, family. You said you had a daughter. Yeah, um, I've been a single dad. You know, uh, luckily I have a wonderful girlfriend. Okay, oh, and she uh, gives me a hand with my daughter, but. I've been seeing my girlfriend for just over two years. So she's been there helping me that time. Nice. But I think uh, I got a divorce when I was, when she was three and she's about to turn 13. So it's been about oh, 10. Yeah. I've kind of been doing the single dad thing on top of, you know, my career on top of being a professional bodybuilder, which is a significant burden. Yes. And I don't want to say that in a bad way. Are you taking care of a human? You're taking care yeah. of my, my child. And I want to do the best to do that. Mm-hmm. So there's some sacrifice that has to be there yep. that will take away from bodybuilding. Yeah. But I found a found, find balance. And <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to, you have to, um, mm-hmm. are you, are you, the, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Know anything else. You grew up with poverty too, because she eats all the same foods that I do. She's like a natural athlete. And she's got a yeah. great, uh, great physique just because she eats so well. Oh, good. Good. Do you, uh, do you find yourself being like that Jack dad? That's like scaring away all the boys or girls. Uh, uh, I don't think I've had to put much effort into trying to be that because I am that. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you just radiate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I haven't met too many of my daughter's friends, but from what I understand, her friends are very aware of who I am. Right. So yeah, I got to say yes to that. That's pretty cool. What kind of sports is she into? You said she's a natural athlete. Well, uh, she used to be into gymnastics and she oh, used cool. to do some uh, jujitsu. I want to really? see her get in. They've got some women's wrestling programs here in the high schools in Colorado. So I want to see her get into that. But she's been running mm-hmm. track recently. It reminds me of my I used to do everything. I used to run track. Wrestling was my main gig. Yep. Soccer, cross country. Mm. Was, soccer. That's interesting. Yeah. I wasn't very good at soccer. No. <laughs> no, I was a wrestler. I was good at being physical and like pushing and hitting people. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, you get kind of soccer. knocked on the points for for hitting in soccer. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I made up for uh, what I didn't have in ball handling skills in my physical brutality. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that, that's a uh, football one one. Uh huh. Yeah, both football, soccer, and football. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm, man, uh, I really appreciate you coming on. I know you're crazy busy and uh, you were just getting to your Airbnb. Like, how's, yeah, how's that I, going? I in the day. Yeah, I got up, got a, everything packed today. I didn't do anything yesterday. Wow. I had some food stuff ready, but yep. my food packed, got my bags packed. I didn't forget anything either because I've done this so many times. It's just yep. like, yeah, but, that's uh, got to help. I, I got here in Indy maybe um, four hours ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just chilling on the air here at the Airbnb. I took a nap right before we did this, and we're about to go to Whole Foods now and stock up on everything I need to finish this process and kick ass at the Indy this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any? Some people don't like to talk about it, but like, is there anyone that you're like specifically concerned about, or do you think you're going to compare well to most people? The most the person I'm most concerned about is myself. Um, yeah. I just, need to finish this process right you know uh, and it's not gonna be the easiest but um 
in terms of other competitors, yeah, there's top dogs who I know are probably going to be in the top five. Mm -hmm. Um, probably in this order. I th- uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it. I think I'm on. I'm coming in there and I'm gunning for a win. Yeah. Uh, the, the top spots outside of that's going to be probably Charles Griffin, The Blessing, uh, Ronald Gordon, or Justin Rodriguez. Yeah. Ronald Gordon looks so nutty. Like his yeah, proportions are so proportions. crazy. Yeah. If he just had some back density. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Ron. I'm just kidding, Ron. Uh, well, I mean, you can critique. You can critique. There's nothing wrong with that. It's no, Ron's a friend, yeah. um, and he's he, through our mutual friend, my coach Dave Calic. Kal- mm-hmm. But um, me and Ron, I I really respect him because he is a great bodybuilder, mm-hmm. and he just pushed me to be that much better. So I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lay down to Ron. I'm coming in to beat him, even though we're friends and we're close. Yep. You know we battle. So, yep. but it's a, it's a mutual thing. He's a great bodybuilder, and he pushes me to be my best self. And yep. same for him. You know he knows I'm coming, and he knows I'm no slouch. Good. Yeah, that's um, something that I, I take pride in on this channel is we come from a place of love. And, uh, you know, we love our athletes. We love the sport. And, uh, you know, we want to see everyone do their best. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Doran, if you want to tag your, um, you know, plug your sponsors real quick or anything you're affiliated with, you said your personal training. Yeah. So uh, I've got a new tech business, which is associated with personal training is Dr. Fit. Go check that out at drfit.io. Uh, Cairo Omega has been my chiropractic slash personal training business and wellness clinic that I've been running for 11, 12 years now. Um, some of my sponsors, I really want to thank from the great North Canada, a perfect sport nutrition. Uh, they've been helping me out this whole past year okay. and they have a great team and they really do some nice things to kind of, uh, promote me and it's a mutually beneficial sponsorship. And that's something that I've been wanting. Um, then Betha Pharma out of South America. Oh, yep. Yeah. I've seen that before. On, yeah. The, um, yeah. They used to sponsor Justin Rodriguez as well, but they, he just found a new sponsor along those lines. So, okay. Gotcha. Yep. Uh, but um, the, the oxytropin, oxytropin is kind of weird because everything going on politically over in Russia because it's a Russian based company. Oh, so that's they, unfortunate. They help with growth hormone and stuff like that. Oh, good. So, that's got to help a lot. Yeah. Uh, a little uh, little insight, guys. Uh, so we were just finishing up and then uh, Zoom just decided to stop. So uh, Mr. Uh, Doran had to uh, swing by and get some some food for the day and for tomorrow mm-hmm. getting ready. And uh we just wanted to finish up uh, on a good note. Well, so, well, we made it back. Yeah, yeah. What did you uh, pick up from the store? Uh, a little bit of everything. Uh, th- then again, it's really clean stuff. And I basically yeah. didn't get anything for after the show. So I wouldn't be tempted uh, by anything before the that's show. That's so smart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I got two pounds of shrimp, a pound and a half of Chilean sea bass, um, broccoli, asparagus, peppers. Some oatmeal, some jasmine rice. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah. And I think I got uh, some kombucha too. Okay. Yeah, that's got the really, uh, really clean stuff. Yeah, that's got like pro uh, probiotics in it, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. all about that guy. Good, good. Yeah, keep the keep the midsection tight. <laughs> exactly. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Um, I think. Uh, do you? Uh, can you recap your uh, your sponsors? I think we. Um, I think we stopped around. Um, you're talking about your nutrition sponsor up in Canada. Yeah, Perfect Sport Nutrition. Um, they've been with me for about a year now. Um, I think after the Indie Pro, the New York Pro, I had a lot of success, and that's when they reached out to me and found me. And oh, I always wanted a sponsor that we could kind of grow together with. Mm-hmm. They seem to be an up and coming company, and we seem to have uh, a mutual respect for one another. So it's working out pretty well. Good. Good. Cool. You uh, are they thinking about coming out with some cool jerseys like what you got on now? Uh, they've got some cool stuff, really. Yeah. Um, oh, good. I wish I fit into some of it better. <laughs> they they sponsor the a lot of fighters, like in MMA, so they got all these like medium shirts that they give to all their athletes. Yeah, it's medium. Triple X stuff for me. Yeah, yeah. Is that that's the story? Is as soon as you start bodybuilding, you're immediately in a in a two X. <laughs> like just to start with. <laughs> Cool, man. Um, well, shoot, man. Uh, I'll let you get back to the family. Uh, I appreciate you coming on uh, this close to the Indie Pro. 
um, if you want to say anything else, but I mean, we really appreciate you making time and, uh, and best of luck at the Indy pro. Yeah. I think we touched on pretty much everything I had to say, you know, I'm here to kick ass and I just want to do my best. And, um, when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, I always look at if, as long as I'm improving and progressing, I'm winning, you know, yes. it doesn't matter the competition that shows up in what place I get, mm -hmm. you know, I'm personally winning if I'm improving upon myself. So that's my goal for this weekend. And I hope that's good enough to beat everybody else too. Mm, uh, absolutely. To thank you for taking the time to have me on the show and hope you get some viewers and get something out of this. Oh, absolutely. Dorn. Yeah. I know people are going to enjoy it. Uh, people have been really begging for uh, those long format videos that they can listen to while doing cardio. So uh, I know it. people are going to eat it up, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's always good yeah. to have something fun to listen to, or especially now that we had you on, I mean, very informative. So I know they'll enjoy it. Beautiful. All, All right, right y'all. Well, thanks for listening. Yeah. Mr. Doreen Haywood. Thank you so much. Uh, good luck. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. All right, man. Take care. Later. All right, bye.